The following content is meant purely for educational and informational purposes and should not be relied upon as financial, investment, legal, tax, or any other professional advice. This is the Fundamentals Podcast, where we demystify crypto and help you navigate this ever-evolving internet native economy. Today, I'm joined by His Excellency Justin Sun, the founder of Tron, a layer one blockchain. In this episode with Justin, we discuss Tron's position within the blockchain market and the core optimizations they have focused on. We uncover the drivers behind Tron's market-leading user activity numbers and the network's impressive traction in emerging markets. We also speak about what perspective blockchains should be analyzed and valued from, and finally, we discuss the most exciting things coming on Tron's roadmap. His Excellency, Justin Sun, welcome to the Fundamentals Podcast. It is great to have you on. I've been really looking forward to get to dive into the details behind Tron and your current traction. To dive right into it, it would be great if you could start by laying out the core problem that Tron set out to solve. So like in other words, what is your unique selling proposition within the L1 blockchain space? Sure, definitely. So Tron is one of the largest blockchain in the world. We have a very robust ecosystem with stablecoin, DeFi, NFT, and all the different friends of the blockchain application, they can build on Tron network. Today, we have over 50 billion US dollars worth of stablecoin on our network. And also, of course, we have other crypto assets as well, like Bitcoin, Ethereum, and all the Tron tokens. So lots of the developers building on our platform. And also, of course, we are always dedicated to offering them the best place to build. Yes, that's amazing. And the 50 billion number is a great traction that you've achieved today. Now, how would you describe the core optimizations that Tron has really focused on compared to previously launched blockchains? So I think today our space is very fascinating. There's lots of innovation and progress is making every day by the entire space. So that's why uh, I believe in the future, most of the layer one solutions will focus on one segment of what they are doing best for. For example, I think Ethereum today, I think it's more like a layer one solution, but you don't have to settle on Ethereum. Uh, you don't have to really use the Ethereum blockchain to actually, you know, use the Ethereum blockchain. And we, we have seen so many like layer two solution. And recently we even see like layer three solution. So that's why I, I, I think Tron is the same. So for Tron blockchain, I think right now the best and basically the, the place we are doing the best is stable coin. So most of the tether transaction today uh, is happening on the Tron network. So it's just like, you know, I think RB Tron compared to Ethereum, right? Uh, Tron compared to Ethereum. So I think today lots of dApps start to building and the DeFi application building on Arbitron because you don't have to use Ethereum anymore. I think Tron is the same. So for you, if you want to do stable coin transaction, I think Tron is the best place to do that. Uh, and also, of course, based on, I think, stable tra coin tra transaction is something we we are doing the best and then on top of that we we are starting to do DeFi, nft game and also recently we just launched stable coin liquidity token so basically which means you can just like stake stth you can stake on stusdt and basically earning four to five percent apy per day it's a very good product it's also building on top of stable coin so so that's why i think that that's something we are doing the best on stablecoin and we are gradually expand to other places based on the first advantage we have. I love that. I think the focus on stablecoins is definitely much needed and a really clear, unique selling proposition as well. Now, if, if I were to pull up like the blockchain market sector dashboard on Token Terminal, one very interesting data point that pops out immediately is that you pretty much all the time dwarf every other blockchain ecosystem in terms of user activity numbers. Could you shed a bit of light on who the users are and what they're currently using Tron for? Sure. Uh, I think Tron right now is one of the largest blockchain in emerging markets, right? So that's why um, I, I think these have advantage and disadvantage. Advantage is, of course, we see the number is great, right? So we have a, a huge CAU. So lots of the blockchain don't have. But of course, I think also if you talk about the average value per user, uh, emerging market is way smaller than I, I think United States, you know, North America, and uh, also of course, Europe. So that's why you see today, I think Tron, we have around five times the daily active users of Ethereum, but still I think 
Today, if you talk about the market cap of Tron to Ethereum, Tron is only 5% of the Ethereum. I think one of the reasons is because of Ethereum occupy U.S. markets, which, you know, they have most of the um, value over there. But actually, I, I'm kind of like a proud what Tron is doing because I believe one of the reasons uh, we started blockchain industry is because we, wo we want to focus on emerging markets. Emerging markets especially stablecoin emerging markets solve lots of poverty issue actually you know we help the people on bank to get crypto accounts which basically help them to get bank accounts and they can store their value by holding uh, us dollars stablecoin which most of them don't even have those capability in in their country for example india like myanmar Vietnam, uh, china you know not lots of the places uh, it's very hard for people to get U.S. dollars accounts and holding uh, U.S. dollars and get access to Bitcoin, cryptocurrency. So, so that's why I think this is a very unique proposition and help lots of people change their lives. So, so that's like, I think we are doing the best. And recently, we also see huge number of the users increase in Africa. Majority of them come from Nigeria, uh, which is also a developing country. I, I think needs blockchain infrastructure. So right now, I think the daily active users of Tron is around 3 million to 4 million users. But in the future, we are targeting to have 30 million, 40 million, even 100 million daily active users per day. So that's why I think we still have lots of room to grow. And by um, by doing that, I, actually, I, I think we will benefit the whole industry and benefit lots of people to get access to crypto to change their life. Yeah, I love that. And I think that the adoption in emerging markets and the stablecoin use case are very clear. And I've noticed that in my real life as well, it's been a few months in the middle east every year and that was the first place where i noticed like completely frictionless payments for day-to-day -day <laughs> commerce on a day-to-day -day basis I'll pay, I'll pay for you know a taxi or some i want to buy which any kind of crypto payment mechanism in the western countries or even i was in el salvador earlier this year there's just too much friction compared to what you've kind of been able to introduce to the tron network so that's that's great to see now how do you see this uh, user activity developing into the future then as you focused on emerging markets getting off is that where you will keep the focus or do you also want to uh expand outside of that so uh first of all i believe emerging markets is very important in terms of the growth rate because us like european is a very maturing market, right? So uh, most of the people has access to financial markets and uh, bank accounts. But for emerging markets, they have a very fast population increase rate, right? For example, like Africa is even more than 5-10% of the population increase rate. And most of the users, they have no access to banking and the payment solution. And also, of course, I think banks don't want to serve them as well because of the cost. So that's why I think that's the place blockchain can provide basically the best support uh, for them. And also, uh, lots of the people in the developed countries have never paid attention to because they have Stripe, right? They have like all the payment infrastructure, credit card, like every day they can use. So they are not even aware of, you know, lots of people actually, they don't have bank accounts and they need access to um, payment solution and the infrastructures. And also, one of the best way um, blockchain can support is also uh, international transaction, which I I think also has the biggest advantage because, you know, I, I have seen lots of people, for example, in Africa, if they are going to another country, it's very hard for them even wire money from one country to another. So that's also the, when it comes to blockchain is perform the best because you can transact any stablecoin on Tron to another place in instantly. That's also lots of the people in big countries not realize that. For example, in United States, last time I checked, like 80% of the American never been abroad. So they only live in their own country. So that's why they have like no idea, right? When people try travel like internationally, they need to move money, move value around. But actually this is one of the most driving force of the economic development 
is、uh, global trade and also basically the communication happen internationally. So that's why、uh, I believe Tron and the blockchain can also play a very big role on helping the world communicate with one another in the financial way. So that that's also、uh, why we are building、uh, Tron Network and the stablecoin and willing to provide this kind of the infrastructure for global wiring and communication. Yeah, the focus on stablecoins and how that provides clear value for an end user and especially just the general population in emerging markets is like super clear. I want to quickly speak about Tron as an economy and the application or business side of things. So as you're building this economy, what type of builders and applications do you want to cater to? And what applications are best suited to be built on top of Tron? So I think first of all, we are targeting stablecoin first, right? So that's why first of all, we solve the problem of transact stablecoin on Tron. There has lots of aspect. First of all, it's building stablecoin on Tron. So that's why we collaborate with lots of. Big developers like Tether, Circle, TUSD, and, and the Paxos. I'm building all different kind of the stablecoin on Tron Network. And also recently, we are collaborating with other government and the big banks to build other stablecoin like Hong Kong dollar, Japanese yen, and and also other national currency on Tron Network. So I think that's the first thing to provide different stablecoin on Tron Network. And then on top of that, I think we need to build all different kinds of infrastructure support for stablecoin. For example, recently we introduced STUSDT on Tron. So basically, you can staking stablecoin to earn yield around four to five percent Tron Network. And then、uh, we are also moving to lending protocol, right? It's like just lend. It's like RV compound Tron. Wish you can take collateral and borrow other assets on Tron Network. But of course, major currencies do、uh, stablecoin. And also after that, after the lending protocol,、uh, you can build Sun Swap, Sun IO. It's like Curve and Union Swap on Tron, providing trading for stablecoin and the trading of crypto on top of Tron Network. And then. Ah,、uh, you can building other ah、uh, collateral and earning protocols on Tron, taking leverage, you know, futures trading. So that's why I think this is just like Lego, right? So you need to build the foundation and gradually builds the protocol and the infrastructure support and DApps application ah、uh, one by one. And, and also, of course, on the high level, you can still build GameFi NFT if you have more liquidity. So so that's why I think this is ah、uh, basically we are building the. Prada,、uh, step, step, and also, of course, to offering the best support、uh, to our users.、Mm -hmm. And I mean, given the kind of Lego type of multi-component structure of blockchains, it might be a bit complex.、Yes. And there's discussion around how L1 blockchain should be viewed from like an investor's point of view. Are they businesses? Are they economies? Are they purely networks or something else? What is your take on this?、Uh, what what are Blockchains. Sure.、Uh, I think for most of layer one solution like Tron, Ethereum, is settlement layer, right? So basically, I think most of the people come to the network. The only reason is because of settlement. So that's why they expected network to settle transaction safe, fast, and cheap. So I think that's like the the only reason they come to the network. So that's why for me, if I want to evaluate a network, I think decentralization, reliability, and safe, cheap transaction, fast, cheap transaction. Uh, is the most important metrics if I value like layer one solution. So that's why I think Ethereum.、Uh, we learn lots of lessons from Ethereum as well. I, I think Ethereum doing very good in terms of the layer one to be a foundation for a layer one solution. Ethereum Foundation is very cautious on、uh, developing Ethereum. So that's I think most of the layer two solution, la layer two like developers and the DeFi on、um, developers they need for the. Network. I think for Chuang、um, and the Chuang Foundation, we have the same proposition. I think we want to build a network reliable, fast, and cheap. And on top of that, I think we will cautiously、uh, develop the product and make this to be a very 
good foundation for all the developer. And also, um, we probably have some bad examples. Recently, I will take like Phantom as an example. So I think Phantom Foundation carelessly, you know, making multi-chain to become their assets, their solution provider. So when multi-chain collapse, basically Phantom go, go down with them. So I think that's like one of the problem because, you know, um, everyone developed like on layer one solution was like a, a reliable in decade terms, right? It's, it's like building on a blockchain is like living in some place. It's not like you could just gonna visit there for one or two days, but you're gonna live there for like five, like 10 years. So you definitely don't want like change like all the time and right. Any disaster happens, you know, you become like one well, of the collateral. So that's why uh, I believe Ethereum Tron is doing good, but some of the layer one solution, you know, Solana, like Phantom, like they all have this kind of the problem. So when like FTX, like multi chat, like clubs, the layer one solution itself become like the victim for that. So, so that's why I, I think if we want to plan for the long term, we need to be aware of all the risks. Yes, that, that's really well framed. Now, just finally to wrap this up, what's next for Tron? Is there anything you can share about the most exciting upcoming developments from your roadmap? So recently, uh, Tron has developed on RWA, so real world assets. So we want to introduce uh, the real world assets and the Yale on Tron network. So that's why we are building recently, we are building STUSDT on Tron. So it's very easy to use. You can just use any type of the stable coin to staking on Tron network. We are also offering our Ethereum version. So both Ethereum Tron, you can stake the stable coin and earning around four to 5% annually, which is the annual yield for most of the real world assets today. And also provide a very good liquidity. You can unstake stablecoin and receive the unstake stablecoin almost instantly. So this is kind of like Lido, right? So basically you can stake ETH and to earn the yield of Ethereum network. And also if you want liquidity, you can unstake STETH and receive them in a few days. So I think this is a very good product. Also um, provide a very good solution for uh, liquidity of the stablecoin. So I expect it STUSDT to grow in the future. That's exciting stuff. Looking forward to see how everything develops there. Uh, thank you so much, Justin, for this great uh, overview of Tron here. I really appreciate you taking the time. Thank you.